Welcome to Pop Turnative, where we dive into topical discussions from the worlds of pop culture, social media, and sports. Here is your host, Peter Romoliotis, aka PD Beats. PD Beats here from Pop Turnative, speaking to Sour Hand Matthew Jeffers about the film Unidentified Objects, currently doing the festival run, including Outfest in July. Welcome to the show. Thank you both so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you. This is exciting. Like, it's a really cool thing, right? You make a movie. Matthew, you make a movie. You wait, post-production, everything, and boom, film festival circuit. How, how are you feeling lately, Matthew? Um, yeah, no, it's, it, it, <laughs> it's really, it's a good way to put it. Um, it's been a, it's been a, uh, a wild ride. Um, where, you know, we had this very, very, as Sarah will tell you, a very, very consolidated um shooting schedule shot in 19 days it was like came and went and then we you know it's like quiet 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 for many 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 months and then last summer we had a couple of private screenings for friends and family uh while we you know figured out our our place in the festival world and um it's 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 we it's like you know you're in a car in traffic right <laughs> feels that way you're in a car in like a traffic jam and like you can't really look down too long because even though you're sitting still at some point there could be space in front of you and you gotta like start driving again so there's that kind of like stop and go stop and go to this whole process um that I'm this is all very new to me it's not new to Sarah but it's new to me so I'm processing a lot of 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 this uh cadence yeah. uh, of this journey but but it, it does feel, I don't want to get too excited, it does feel that we're finally starting to uh, really gain some traction and, and hopefully it only continues to pick up from here. 100%. Now, this Sarah, this is the only question of the interview that's probably a question that you're going to be asked all the time. On Pop Turnative, you know, we interview a lot of people. I want to ask questions that you're not always asked and everything, but I mean, the film, what can you tell us specifically, elevator pitch or specifically about unidentified objects? Um, what what the fans can kind of expect a little bit and, and the viewers expect with this film? Um, I think you can expect a wild ride, a lot of ups and downs, emotional roller coasters, comedy, drama, weirdness, aliens, road trips. It's like you're, <laughs> you know, the most delicious sandwich of weirdness. You had me and, at aliens. <laughs> yeah, definitely aliens and Canada. You know, Absolutely. that's where aliens. And the um, film just did Inside Out, uh, Inside Out, right, in Toronto as well, right? Yeah, we did Inside yeah. Out in Toronto and then moving into, um, into Outfest, we're going to have, uh, we're sandwiched between like Billy Porter, Kevin Bacon, Julianne Moore, Todd Haynes, like all of these incredible people. And then our little indie, you know, starring just the two of us. And that, you know, is enough clout to go see it. It's so weird, Matthew, because I feel like indie, like indie film, I mean, some of the most popular movies these days are independent films, right? And I find it's the same thing, too, with, like, I'm a big music guy, right? So a lot of, like, some of my favorite bands are, like, indie rock bands, like Vampire Weekend, Arctic Monkeys, right? Yeah. These bands are playing stadiums. Isn't it kind of ironic a little bit? It's, it's interesting, right? Yeah, I think I think it points to where our uh, culture is at large. How yeah. I think you know I, I don't know. It's a good question. So my gut tells me that as a as a macro culture, mm -hmm. where we we've gotten too soft, yeah. right? The, the the stories that we're telling that are rated G that are for the masses um, can sometimes feel um, one color. Yeah. And uh, I think people, I think our society and our culture has to give the people living in it a little more credit to like get a little messy. Yeah. And I think that's why indie films, indie bands, indie is yeah. now like the big thing because people are like, no, I want to get a little messy. I want to get a little uncomfortable. Like I want to see something on stage that makes me go, or, yeah. and that's right now that's like, that that's in, independent world is like come this way and will make you feel really uncomfortable I know in, in so many different ways that's a very true point to add to that a little bit Sarah I find it interesting there's two things that play with this film that I really love and that really interests me there's the genre bending component of it because I'm loving content that is 
not afraid to kind of push the envelope and be a lot of different things. You know what I mean? You kind of mentioned it when I asked you about this film. I mean, if that's not genre bending, I don't know what is. You know what I mean? <laughs> but there's that. But there's a, there's obviously also the themes of representation, friendship, acceptance, and everything. Did they kind of work hand in hand those two in terms of things that kind of drew you towards a project like this? The genre bending and the, you know the acceptance, representation, the friendship component with your characters was was the tag team there a little bit? So I think that, you know, by creating these complex characters, it just kind of went hand in hand with the inclusivity thing. Yep. It's like, you know, they're, they're so uniquely themselves that it kind of is a little bit of, of an anthem to the outsiders of the world, yep. um, finding a place together in this narrative. And, you know, we made a point of using um, my partner, my boyfriend, who's the lead singer of Incubus, Brandon Boyd, did the music supervision. And he, you know, pulled in these queer artists like Perfume Genius, who did a bunch of songs for us. And we just, we have this kind of overarching inclusivity that we didn't even really mean to do. It just happened because we all happen to be the kind of people that are inclusive and we like to bring together different types of people. So it worked out really naturally and then kind of fit perfectly into the queer film festival world, which we, we didn't really expect. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and, you know, I think just jumping back to the, the indie, it's, you were talking about the, the genre bending that yeah. Sarah touched on. I, I think what, what is unique about the film in, in, in ex experiencing with the audiences now is um, it really truly is genre bending. Like yeah. it, like there, there are, it, things things change very quickly in this film. Um, and it's really interesting to kind of sit back and, and observe the audiences digesting it because really uh, from like one scene to the next and even sometimes within a scene, like you will have audiences um, like cracking up, like cackling. And then like literally moments later, they're, they're like wiping tears away. And so yeah. I, I think that's, it's been exciting to see that because like as an audience member myself, like to be able to, to watch a story that really like takes me on like a, a literally an emotional roller coaster like that is, is like very scary, but in yeah. like a really exciting way um, because you just don't know exactly what's going on and what's going to happen next. And I think I, I, um, I had a really good, a really good friend that I sent a, a rough cut to last year um and it's so interesting because he texted this uh san francisco magazine just like came out saying like it's sure to be an indie cult classic and it was so when i saw that it was so weirdly gratifying and validating and who knows what will happen but he texted me last year within the first like 20 minutes and he was like oh my god this looks like a film that could easily become like a cult classic just like absolutely it's just like it's just so it's just it's weird enough to like stick out um and and so yeah we'll see i mean we'll see what happens but it was it was fun to to explore that and just, but i find it. that really interesting what you said about like the genre bending matthew because i feel like and then you can even like link this to music too like i don't feel like anyone wakes up in the morning and is like i want to make a movie that's like everything and like genre bending i feel like it just kind of happens you know what i mean it's a good script that kind of has elements i mean sorry you mentioned you know your boyfriend and, and incubus i mean that's a band that's been genre bending for years and years i don't really feel like they like woke up and they were like we're gonna make alternative with a little bit of other things and i i feel like it just kind of happened sarah yeah, i feel like it could be almost to to their detriment in a way because they don't fit into any one specific thing like they can go on tour and do the oz fest they can do a metal fest they can do a pop fest they can do all these different things so they don't identify as one genre they're definitely rock in a way but with all the you know international world music they add to things and the rapping and the dj it's like it's very eclectic so you know his participation in this as a producer yeah. is so organic he was just like oh yeah this story is amazing and it's so weird well, there's that so relatability right there is that like that genre bending thing has to do with it a little bit i feel like i i, I do feel like there's that i don't see a lot of genres like there's obviously movies like you look at top gun right top gun's like a film 
that knows what it is. You know what I mean? But there's not many of those these days if you think about it, right, Matthew? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um... Yeah, I mean, and just sorry to go back to, to Sarah's point, yeah. like uh, Brandon's influence, um, like the, the the music in the film is, it's amazing. You know, I mean, it has an incredible soundtrack, genre bending soundtrack too. I mean, there's the, you got that little like there's the whole theme songs. of this interview, alien genre bending. <laughs> alien genre bending, it's what it is, and he, I mean, he really, he really truly helped make uh, create this this whole ambiance. Um, it, it's it's just amazing. I mean, look, why why is like Bohemian Rhapsody like one of the greatest songs of all time? It's like that you go on this like it it, it changes rap like radically changes right within within their beats in that song. That just you're just like, okay now we're doing this and now it's like uh, now it's like a it's just it it's a it's a ride and but it but it somehow like feels fluid and mm -hmm. that's why it's like one of the greatest songs of all time. But um, yeah, it's exciting to listen and to experience stories that really kind of don't let you get too comfortable in your seat. Has it started out? The question for both of you, I want Sarah to start this and then go to Matthew. I mean, in terms of it kind of finally doing the festival run, when does it start to kind of officially like hit you, Sarah, that people are going to see your film, basically? Because obviously, like on days today or weeks today, like before the festivals, you do press. Yeah, it starts to hit you. But is it when you get like the email from your team, like, oh, we got accepted here. You know, we're going to be at this film festival in three months. Like, or does it kind of one of those things where it hits you that you made a film after you wrap and you're waiting for post? Like, when does it start to hit you exactly? I got hit with it this time when we were sitting in the movie theater at Inside Out in Canada. I was like, okay, all that, all the interviews, all the stuff, we did the photos, but now I'm sitting down with the popcorn. Oh my God, everyone's going to watch the movie now. Are they going to like this? Am I going to suck? Do I suck? Is everyone, what, am, am I crazy? What's happening? And then I just, it starts and it's so immediately beautiful that I just immediately relaxed, but it really hit me like sitting in the seat yeah. with the popcorn. Absolutely. Um, this time with, with like going to Outfest and going to Frameline, I feel more prepared and I'm also like even more nervous somehow because I'm aware that we're going to watch it again. <laughs> oh, absolutely. And actually, Matthew, I'm gonna, I, I lied. That's not the question I'm asking you. I have another question to ask you. <laughs> um, when people get to watch your film, whether they see it, you know, um, at a festival or whatever, when they see it, when it's available to the masses eventually, like, like what are you hoping they get out of it takeaway wise when they watch unidentified objects? Um, <laughs> that's a good question. Um, that's why, I mean, that's why I'm here. <laughs> the, 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 there, there are a lot of themes. Uh, there are a lot of themes that, that this film posits. I yeah. think, I think for, for, for specificity, um, I, and I talked about, 